Hello there, there is a saying, healthy body, healthy mind. You guys know Jonah Hill, right? He's this Hollywood actor. I think I first saw him in The Wolf of Wall Street. I love the character he played. He was so charismatic and fun. I don't mean I want to be like Tony Aza for anything, but it was just really cool watching him. Let's discuss this actor's famous transformation for a moment. He's made a noticeable change in his weight and appearance relatively not long ago. He used to have a heavier build for a long time, but lately he's adopted a healthier lifestyle, resulting in significant weight loss. Some argue that his success throughout this transformation was mainly due to his resources, like having access to nutritionists and trainers, but let's not use this as an excuse to give up on our own health goals. Regardless of our fame or bank balance, we can still strive for a healthier and happier life. Don't you think? Of course, money does help, but still let's not overthink it. If you're new around here, and we haven't talked, my name is Leah, and today's topic is pretty crucial. When it comes to boosting your health, exercising often tops the list. Whether you're already committed to exercise or pondering whether to start, I suggest sticking around. You won't regret it. Let's delve a bit deeper into the transformation I mentioned earlier. Should we place such a big emphasis on these appearance changes? Before this big change, Jonah Hill, like many of us, dealt with weight-related jokes. It's crucial to remember that behind the celebrity persona, there is a person dealing with their own struggles and insecurities, just like anyone else. On one hand, talking about such changes could be motivating for those aiming to lose weight, and if the person wants to share their journey, that's nice too. But on the flip side, our culture tends to mock how people look, and that's something we should be cautious about. This isn't just advice for you. It's a reminder to myself as well. Engaging in physical activity brings numerous positive changes to our lives. Just hear me out. Research indicates that both men and women who increase their physical activity and fitness levels could potentially reduce their risk of premature death by a significant 20 to 35%. Think about it for a second. 20%. Speaking of longevity, my granny comes to my mind as a prime example. She's been active her whole life, and it's likely one of the reasons she's about to hit her 90th birthday. Consistent physical activity, whether aerobic or resistant training, has also been linked to a decreased risk of type 2 diabetes and certain types of cancers. Furthermore, regular physical activity plays a vital role in preventing the loss of bone mineral density and the onset of osteoporosis. I personally love exercising. Even if it wasn't so beneficial, I think I would still do it. However, reality isn't always a dream, and those benefits do require a cost that not everyone is prepared to bear. Not every healthy individual engages in regular exercise. It boils down to dedicating time, effort, finding motivation, and building habits in this domain. Essential to understand which specific challenges we're dealing with. To reap substantial benefits, aiming for a minimum of 150 minutes is advised. This involves moderate intensity activities such as brisk walking or cycling, alternatively, treadmill workouts or other machines work well if outdoor activities aren't your thing. Let's crunch some numbers. Say, not every day, but thrice a week for 50 minutes each session. That's a considerable chunk of time, no doubt. However, there is another route. 75 minutes of vigorous activity weekly. Consistency is key here again. It's not just about what you do, but how regularly you're physically active. If finding friends for a game of basketball isn't always feasible, having backup options handy is smart. You can also mix up the intensity levels to meet the weekly activity recommendations more flexibly. Speaking of physical activity, I can't omit to mention gym. If we're talking about regular weightlifting, it's not a moderate intensity aerobic activity, it's a strength training. There are definitely benefits from this type of workout, but it's essential to incorporate a variety of exercises into your routine, including both resistance training and aerobic exercises for overall health and fitness. It's hard for me to tell this because I love weightlifting and it's much more interesting for me than doing cardio. But a good thing is there are treadmills there, so if you want to go to the gym, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna lift weights. Bottom line, if you're looking for listed earlier health benefits, do aerobic exercises. And now let's address the elephant in the room. Pesky excuses that often stand between us and exercising. We've all been there. Right? Feeling awesome after a good workout, but then the next day rolls around and suddenly excuses start creeping in like uninvited guests. But every time we show up, despite these excuses, that's where the magic happens. So let's dive a bit deeper and talk about some of the most common excuses. The elusive 
lack of time. That's one excuse that often sneaks its way into our busy lives, isn't it? Work, classes, social obligations, it's like time flies faster than your favorite track and repeat. Here is the thing about time. It's as much a master as it's a friend. And when it comes to exercising, it's about befriending it. It's about realizing that if you invest your time in doing extra physical activity, you will reap significant benefits. Block specific times for exercise in your daily or weekly schedule. Treat those slots as non-negotiable appointments that cannot be skipped unless absolutely necessary. Sure, there might be times when you skip due to illness, but that should be a rare occurrence and with a valid reason. Making it a priority helps eliminate the no-time excuse because it becomes a regular part of your day just like brushing your teeth. It's crucial to shift your mindset and incorporate exercise into your routine alongside work, study and sleep. Another common excuse is lack of motivation. The classic struggle, right? Sometimes waiting for it to magically appear is like waiting for your food delivery on rainy day. It takes a while. And again, personally for me, the main thing that helps in such cases is establishing a regular gym schedule. It helps make it a habit rather than a choice. Consistency is key here. Skipping here and there often leads to caring less. Motivation is fantastic, no doubt, but it's not a constant companion. If you tend to rely on this excuse, bear in mind that relying solely on motivation might not lead to those remarkable results. It's similar to how you approach your job or studies. Consistency pays off in the long run. Another common excuse is feeling like it's too tough and not knowing where to begin. This worry does have a point though. There is a multitude of options out there and it can be overwhelming. One of the first steps I suggest is determining what you want to achieve through exercise. Whether it's improving overall fitness, losing weight, gaining strength or simply staying active. You can or even should begin with low intensity exercises that you're comfortable with. Gradually increase intensity and duration as your fitness level improves. Experiment with different types of exercise to find what you like. It could be yoga, dancing, hiking or team sports. Enjoyment is key to sticking with it. I, for one, don't really like swimming in the pool. Don't think I would like to do it regularly. But when it comes to playing basketball, I'm always prepared. And set realistic expectations. Be realistic about your capabilities and progress. Don't push yourself too hard initially. I usually think this way. If I don't pay proper attention to technique and recovery time, I risk getting an injury that will prevent me from training for a while. So by trying to do too much, I risk getting less. If you train for some time, you will find the line you shouldn't cross. By the way, I forgot to mention another amazing thing about exercising. Actually, it can be a fantastic way to meet new people and expand your social circle. If you play team sports, obviously, you will do it. It's interesting to become a part of the team with people you're not familiar with. And it's fun to communicate and try to work together. Bottom line, exercising can not only be not annoying, but it can bring so much joy that you will like both the process and the result. The return on investment is crazy. It can make you stronger both physically and mentally. I truly hope this video was helpful. Subscribe if you want to see more and definitely have a good day.